And so one of the things to be aware of when you're working with people who have been through, in some cases, really unimaginable um, torture, horrific human rights abuses, you know, very, very traumatic experiences, is to be aware of the trauma payload that people are carrying. And sometimes this can spill out. So as somebody who's done quite a bit of this teaching, you know, there haven't been many times, but there have been times where I've been in a room and things have really got quite difficult or quite charged and out of control because psychologically somebody's been feeling very unsafe and that's kind of spilled out through their behaviour. So the general things to remember when you're thinking about how to create a trauma informed environment or a psychologically informed environment are to keep things quite calm and gentle and spacious. There isn't too much pressure to give people time to process information and to kind of think about responses to make sure that there are opportunities for people to make connections with other people in the room so that they feel that sense of safety if they know who they, people know each other's names for example so if you're in a situation where you're a volunteer and you're running a class then it's a really good idea to spend time for people to meet each other and sit with different people at different times so they feel a sense of i'm connected with different people in this room not just the same one or two people or i don't always sit in the same place that all helps you feel safer actually you don't have to guard a little bit of territory and you're feeling frightened but you've got that sense of being relaxed and peaceful um, that people are warm and friendly and that if somebody is looking like they've got a lot of feeling and it's going to come out in a way that's hard to manage that you can just do a bit of gentle anchoring of like okay let's just all take three breaths together you know let's just sort of have a moment just to settle things down so there are various sort of breathing techniques, grounding techniques that you can bring into a space if necessary. If somebody does lose it and starts to, oh, I'm thinking of an example of one lady who was um, very distressed and started making very wild accusations about other women in the room when I was working, then again, you know, everybody was trying to help her. So that's the first thing is people are generally kind to other people. It isn't just on you, but as the person running the session, I wanted to press the pause button so de-escalation is our word. We always just try and bring the temperature down, bring the temperature down. And we, we're very mindful of the oxygen of publicity. If something is happening in front of a lot of people, it's like putting oxygen on the fire. It kind of whoops it up because people want to get involved and have to do things and it can get bigger and bigger. So we're just trying to kind of settle it down to the point where we can have a bit of immediate connection with that person and then just say, I'm listening to you. It's okay. Maybe now isn't a good time to talk, but can we talk about this later? Or shall we just step outside for a moment, but find a way to take them into a safe space where they haven't surrounded by lots of people and lots of drama and do just check what they need. If they need to just have some quiet time, if they want one person with them, but don't end up in getting into a huge counseling session with that one person when you're actually, you're there to teach the group and, and that becomes quite tricky. So those sort of questions of emotional safety and just mindful of yourself as well. You know, you stay calm, they're more likely to be calm. You get all kind of flustered and panicky, they're more likely to get flustered and panicky. And paying attention to our own state really helps with that stuff as well.